you want to book as much acting work as you can, as often as you can. We get that. The thing is, you don't book acting work by focusing on booking acting work. The industry is more dynamic than that. The art is more interesting than that. By taking you inside the craft, the casting room, and the business, and bringing other industry experts into the conversation, we dig in. We pull back the curtain of the industry and show you how much power you really have as an artist. Here's the truth. When you bring your humanity to the work and the industry, you become an artistic leader, the kind of actor who books work. Even after decades of working with actors all over the world, in our classes at the BGB studio, teaching, coaching, casting, directing, producing, acting, on set, on stage, behind the camera and in front, nothing excites us more than seeing you express your unique artistic voice, humanize the business, and book work doing it. We're here on the podcast in our online classes at the BGB studio to give you all the tools you need to be a championship level working actor right now in an industry that desperately needs your voice and your leadership. Yeah, industry and artistry. This is the only place you're going to hear this. I'm Risa. And I'm Steve. And this is the acting podcast from the BGB studio. Welcome, everybody, to Season 2 of The Acting Podcast. This episode was recorded earlier in the year, pre-COVID, and we're excited to finally share it with you. We find the conversation in this episode to be relevant, vital, and inspiring. Now, in fact, more than ever. Keep listening and enjoy. Good morning, Steve. Hello, Risa. How are you doing? You're rubbing your eyes. I am. A little, little rough, a little rough here. Yeah. Late class. Last night. Yeah. Oh, was it good though? Oh, it's always good. Yeah. It really is always good. That's yeah. the trick of it. On the one hand, it, uh, it's physically draining and it's sort of challenging to maintain a focus for that long. Particularly, I just got back from Vancouver, having done a workshop there, jump right into class here in Los Angeles. But it's also so reaffirming and it's so uh, uh, spiritually, if you will, emotionally, artistically, it's like these beautiful explosions. It's amazing. Yeah. And that's what it should be, really. And I think our audience, for you guys, sometimes you think that class is the place where you go to learn some tips and tricks and Ah. get some quick fixes on things. But if you think of what yoga class may be for you or dance class may be for you or art class or even working out at your favorite gym... In, in, a, in a way where you're fully engaged, you know, you bring your full self to it and you feed at your soul and your heart and your mind and you connect mind, body, spirit. That's really what class can be and should be so that you're fed as an artist, which is what we are selfishly and, and collectively and collaboratively with our actors in class. And uh, essential to, say it with me, the booking the, mindset. The booking mindset. Right. We were supposed That's to say right. it together. It just didn't happen. Let, yeah. Let's do it, try one more time. I don't know. I feel like it's gone. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was echoing you. It was you. a bit. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, I'm, I'm just go. being your wing person. So <laughs> you go. Talk, uh, the bookie mindset. So that's what we're here to talk about today. What the heck is that? Where does your brain, body, emotional life, and spirit have to be for you to be in a place to make work happen for you? Yeah, before we get into the details here, uh, a couple things. One, uh, let's assume that... This work is necessary as much as it's an emotionally violent industry and lacking confidence is something that is easily done in this industry because um, it's elusive successes in this business. There's all sorts of either no's or uh, the silence of a disinterest or all that sort of stuff. So yeah. it requires uh, one to approach the business when, when one is invited to with some command and some muscularity and a belief in oneself which uh, is all part of this booking mindset. So these sort of uh, essential elements that put you in a position to bring the totality of your talent to to your work, self-tape, audition, and also to uh, radiate the sort of spirit that is one of generosity and of adding value to, as opposed to please love me which doesn't impress anybody (laughs) because uh, as you always uh, speak of everyone in that room, all the decision makers are so worried about their own situation. They don't have the time or capacity to, uh, to lift you up. And it's Um, a burden to them. I mean, if somebody walks in needy and I see that in class, I see that in auditions, see that in people's careers, if they're needy and desperate, then it feels like such an responsibility. And what you tend to do is pull back from it because you can't take care of everybody. 
And so what do you have to do as actors to take care of yourself so that you can walk in in that spirit of collaboration, of generosity, of leadership, so that people find what you and what you bring exciting, infectious, and and that brings the taste of, I want to be around these people and I want to hire these people. I was talking to, just got off a conference call with some producers, and their whole thing was, they said, we said, we really want to work with people who we like. We've all been there with people who are difficult. Yeah. And we want to work with actors who we want to be around because we all have to be together for many, many hours and hopefully many, many years. And we want to create a creative family. And um, I said, what does that look like to you? And they said, you know, people who, who, are, who bring a lot to the table, people who are kind, people who... Um, have are collaborative people who are in the spirit of family like create art artistic family which i thought was absolutely amazing and wonderful and you sure. can't always do that but what does that mean right how do you how do you get to that place so this booking mindset uh is what we're going to talk about here and the other thing um that i want to say before we get into the details is that we're going to offer some places to go some things to do to get there but these are these are many practices, and it's not something that you can listen to a podcast and go, oh, I got it, I'm good. We're just going to offer uh, specific details about what we think, and from our experience, what we see, yeah. uh, has won the day and kept actors, artists generally, in that place uh, of uh, of radiating that, that sort of confidence and creating that space in their own mind and body so that they can uh, bring to bear their talent. Um, so this isn't uh, an exchange of data. This is something that's supposed to just open your minds up a little bit so that you can then engage in the practice of this kind of work. So, uh, the first essential element of a booking mindset, so say we, and there are different uh, opinions on this, is your why. Before anything, before you get into class and before you understand the nature of a scene and then start working on it, before you get to your audition, certainly, before you book anything, you have to know in your cells why you are doing this. What's the fucking point. (laughs) What is your goal? What do you want in all this? Because if you're playing out some sort of tired narrative that you read in some, you know, actor biography when you were 10, which is not your story, uh, or if, if, uh, you are just, you know, following what your agent or manager tells you you should do or whatever else, you're going to be in for a whole lot of hurt here and you won't have the alignment of your body and your mind and your your focus and your balance uh, towards this goal. You have to know with great authority why you are driving to Culver City Friday at 5 p.m. and why you are taking the two hours to prepare for this audition, why you're learning your lines, what is the point here? And, 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 and I would suspect, even though you may think this, it's not about booking a co-star role on a network show or the long-term goal of walking the red carpet to pick up your trophy because those people who do that are very deeply clear on what their why is they may stray from it but they know what that is so so get real on in your in your gut in your heart of hearts what it is the thing that's driving you and and making you give up all sorts of things to be an actor and the answer is going to be unique to you and that's the trick right it's not going to be uh, I just want to be a working actor or like whatever the answers that people people give you have to get specific and uh, you just have to have that total and utter alignment of awareness of your why, followed by from that awareness, then what do I intend to do and the action that you take from that awareness, right? So like if your preparation is coming from, a, I know why I'm doing this, then, uh, then that action will uh, be directed towards that goal. And if you don't, if it's murky why you're doing this, ugh, I mean, I should because I don't know. I just should. This is what I do. I'm an actor. It's it, it, it's going to be diffused. It, you're not going to it's not going to be pointy. So um, your whole being has to come forth in these auditions. I mean, that's your mandate as an actor, right? right? You have and, to experience yeah, this yeah. stuff. So and you getting better know really why. Speci- getting really specific on that and spending some time. And one of the things I want to suggest, we talked about this, Steve, is offering all of you a chance to, when you're done listening to this, to do some writing, some journaling uh, about some of these areas because you got to go deep into that and spend at least like 10 minutes a day until you this thing starts to emerge because this is not something if you're sitting there thinking what is my why you're not it, it's not going to happen instantly you've got to no. you've got to spend some time meditating writing processing really uh, digging into your own personal purpose 
in some of our online coaching, our online classes, we provide some exercises that uh, get you closer to to these some of these answers, which are really important, I think. Because the other thing is that, uh, and this is why it has to be a consistent practice, your why will change. Yes, of course. My why as an actor at 21 uh, was way different at, at 30. And How so? And what, what, you, what, how did it change? Well, what was it? And, and at, what was it? Was it 20 and then 30 and then now that you're where you're at in your life? My why, I think even if I were to have these moments of, uh, you know, of, of reckoning and truth, you know, two in the morning with myself in the mirror at 21, it was the ego stroke and the paycheck, which are probably the same thing, were the same thing for me. Right, right, right. right. Uh, didn't feel like uh, I deserved much else, but goddamn, when someone said, you're booked and you're on the show and we're going to pay you or you're a series regular, I, I love the work. It was terrific. But I think uh, I didn't love it enough to, let's say, you know, uh, do it for 10 years in some black box theater for no money. Mm. I loved that ego stroke, that explosive ego stroke of, um, of someone saying, you're hot shit. Or which at least is, that's how I felt. Yeah, which is a bit of an external a bit, validation. You think? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and I, Exclusively looking external, back, yeah. having done some work, yeah. I know that it was a void that was being filled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which couldn't be filled by that. And so then I'd always be left with the other side of that coin, which was, oh, now I feel like crap again because I haven't booked in two months. <laughs> and so it was this wild roller coaster ride of, uh, look at me, I'm in this tax bracket because I'm on a TV series. Oh shit, I haven't worked in a year and a half. And uh, now I'm a schmuck. And it's just that constant ego, Jekyll and Hyde ego shift, which I think a lot of actors, uh, you know, deal with. Because there, you know, I didn't grow up in a, in a tradition of theater. It wasn't offered in my school. I had to, it sort of came to me. Yeah. Like friends would ask me, hey, I'm shooting this thing. And as you know, so we'd be shooting stuff all the time as, as kids. And, uh, and I kind of f fell into it mm. and, and to a certain extent and, and had some privilege and got lucky early, booked a TV series early. And so uh, the foundation of it didn't really sink in. So if I, if I go to what my why is for the studio right now, it's something so much deeper. It's that I know that if I'm not in and around this work consistently, my life gets bad. That's not awful, but I, things start emotionally atrophying. I'm not open. I have a tough time being vulnerable. Like it, it is the case now that, that the work that I do in class here, which uh, it, it fills me up on an emotional level, but it facilitates my own humanity, the recognition of my own humanity. I then go home and I'm a better husband. I'm a better father. I'm a better human being because of this work. Yeah. Like, and I believe uh, in this Buddhist notion of right livelihood, right? Like that's it, important to me. And so uh, um, on a personal level and also feeling like I'm doing my best to try to create space for hypersensitive people so that they can be emotional leaders in the world and book shit, that the why is so clear for me. It's clear every single time I walk into a class, every time. Yeah. And, and it's not about me so much as it is about the, this work generally and I'm trying to facilitate it and be a vessel for it. It's so clear. Uh, my acting was not as clear to me when uh, I was 21. <laughs> well, it's, and it's hard to do that for any young young actor, I would say, because you're not you're hungry and you see the sparkle and you you have ambition and all of that is absolutely great. But if you have that void of an inner purpose, then it it ultimately is empty and unsatisfying. And the the truth that I see now that I wish I could call up my 21 year old self and, and I would tell that person that there is nothing that the industry can give you that will be better than the artistry. Nothing. That's great. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And, and what I mean by that is that, and the sad thing is, is that, um, you know, series regulars with their $4,000 handbags and all the money's in the bank, only then do they know that. And that's, that's, that can be, this sounds really awful, but that can be disappointing when you're making all that money and you're on set in a situation where the network and the production and the whatever is not designed to fulfill your artistic needs. And yet, yet that's what you're doing 16 hours a day, five to six days a week. And maybe more if there's a stunt day or rehearsals or whatever and press and you go, oh shit, I'm not happy. Mm, I'm not fulfilled. <laughs> not fulfilled. Yeah. And so then you have to figure out ways to create space within that pretty tight structure of time to fulfill yourself, um, yeah. more in that sec. But, um, 
but you better know why you're doing this. And, and uh, I suspect it'll go back to some primordial thing when you were a kid that you desired a level of human interaction that you mm -hmm. didn't get or a place to express your feelings in a way that wasn't available to you. And if that is your interest, if that is your goal and you show up to that co-star on the CW show with that goal, all of a sudden you're elevating everything in there to this other level. Your work is different. It's just different. Yeah. Um, and you bring more value. Yeah. Because it means more to you. You understand this is a calling. It's not about booking this thing. This is about engaging in a human experience. And all of a sudden, that, the careers change when that shift is made. Yeah, if you show up in a, an audition room or on a self-tape and the focus of your work is is elevating the work, bringing humanity to it, finding what's personal about this inside of you, being so filled up with the love of the work that it permeates and, and it transcends and it lifts up the material, then people get blown away because they didn't even know that was on the page. Sure. They didn't even know that was possible. And and you start to live in that practice and in that way of e exploring the work that you're doing. Um, it's going to change how your experience of it, and it's going to change everybody's experience of it who is uh, seeing and feeling your work in a, in a dramatic way. If, on the other hand, you uh, do that, uh, that work and take that fierce inventory, as they say, and realize that you're doing this for the money, that truth will lead you to a bunch of other truths, which is, you know, uh, uh, four or five high end, like, you know, amazing guest spots on the best shows on television may yield you about 30, 40 grand a year. <laughs> you know, that's a great year, you know, and or a and, few commercials. Sure. Whatever yeah. that is yeah. that this, if you're in it because you want to have, you know, a healthy 401k and you're, three kids to go to great schools and whatever else, then this may not be the pursuit for you. I, I don't suspect anyone on any level really gets into it for that. Maybe maybe they do, I don't know, but um, you'll find that this is not necessarily the best no, place for No, it's true, you. it's true. And everybody I know, for example, who books commercials and maybe makes a decent living doing it is still, but I, but I need a theatrical booking. I need some real work because that's just becomes your money job, your day job, your side job. Right, so uh, first thing is why. Yeah. You have to know why, why, why. Second element that we think is essential for this booking mindset is it's sort of broad, but it's filling your tank. And what we mean by that is not showing up to this relationship, any sort of point of contact with the industry with uh, a, a great deal of need or more need that you can't give yourself. What I mean by that is uh, if you're expecting uh, them to fill you up artistically, if you're expecting them to pay your bills, if you're expecting them to treat you like a whole human being, uh, you may be asking more of the industry that it can give you. So what's essential then in those sort of uh, situations that become hierarchical, right? They have this, this thing that you want so bad and you're not giving it to yourself or finding a way to get it somewhere else. Now you're in deep, deep need. That is not, uh, you know, in, in poker they call it being on tilt, right? Like you are way below, starting that relationship from a place of being way below. Please help me. Uh, and that's just, uh, it's beyond an expectation that you can uh, offer to the industry. So what does that look like then? What well, looks like different things to different people? If not being able to pay your rent uh, is... Uh, uh, something that creates anxiety for you. It is your responsibility to pay your damn rent and figure out a way to do it outside of needing the industry to do that for you. Um, Which is not a failure. Oh my God, no. Quite the opposite. Uh, I forget what, uh, it was the Atlantic or something, it was this article recently about the death of the artist and the birth of the, the artist entrepreneur. It is just more and more the case that actors are gonna have to fill their own financial tank. More on that as we talk about an actor's money, that audio program that we have coming out. It's just essential. So like, what if you were doing that work, financially, emotionally, artistically, and, and it was from that place, that foundation, that you were approaching the industry and having the potential to collaborate with them because you're on firm footing. Rilke said, uh, love is when two independent people, I'm paraphrasing here, come together with a common interest mm -hmm. and decide to be together. Two independent and folks. That's, yeah, and that, that looks like collaboration. Absolutely. Yeah. Real, real collaboration, which is what, oh, the only thing anybody wants. And it's so interesting that you say that. I recently had to meet on a couple of different uh, pilots 
couple different shows. And I went to these two meetings. One was on the phone, one was in person. I went there with very different approaches. The first one I went to, I felt a little desperation. Not because I needed the job desperately, but because I felt like I needed to prove myself. After doing this for so many years, yeah. the fact that I was being asked to come in and do a dance and come in in a lineup, it just made me feel more desperate than I needed to. And I didn't right. function the way I'm capable of. I just... I could feel it. I could just feel myself needing to prove myself, which was ridiculous. And and but that's where I where my head was, and I hadn't really given myself the time to process my value, to right. and to and to and to own that. And then I was then asked to come in and I guess do a dance for people I knew really well, and I was stunned by the fact that they were asking me to do that because I knew them really well, but also realized that I was ready to walk away from it. And then I woke up one morning in the shower. I thought, wait a minute, wait a minute. I have, I know what I'm doing. They need me to guide them. I know them so well that I actually know what they need and they need me to guide them and they need my expertise and my experience and my, my taste and my history. And, oh, that is what I have to offer. And it may seem really obvious, but it, it made me remember that um, for actors, that, that that's such an important thing. Like, what is your value? What do you have to offer? And how to fill yourself up with that knowledge and that, that affirmation and that sense of purpose and <clears throat> understanding. And so when I got on the phone, it was a whole different conversation. And at one point I said, what do you guys need from, from me? because this is what I can offer. And I literally said those words, and there was a moment of silence, and then there was this collective sigh of relief, and then there was, no, this is amazing, thank you so much. And I, it was a real thank you so much, not a dismissive one or just a, and, and I just, I think that's so important to know that, but you've gotta go through the process of coming to that place. And again, it's different for everybody. So this is where there is real work to be done, and this is gonna be hard. But you have to ask yourself, what do you need to show up to any relationship, feeling like you have a license to operate there, like you have agency and authority to be there, <clears throat> like you have something to offer, L like, sure, you need, but you don't need more than what you can also give, and are you excited about this opportunity to collaborate? Can you give generously when, when uh, it's asked of you? Those sorts of things. It's different for everybody. And so that looks like getting your finances together, uh, and not being in that place of, of desperation and, and I need them to pay my health insurance. It's an awful place to act from. Yeah. But beyond that, yeah, your self-worth. And there's work to be done there too. Like what do I need to give myself that feeling? And yeah. I know for me, like two things, three things in particular, because I've hit all the walls or a lot of them and you know, been lying on the floor going, wow, it's all for shit, I've lost everything or whatever that is. And the three things that always back, uh, take me back up on my feet are education of some kind, whatever that is, because it, it fills me up. I'm in the practice of something. Uh, I'm, my brain is forced to, you know, to move in different directions. Um, and uh, community engagement, which makes it not about me, about something else, serving, you know, said a different way. Um, and for me, it's always been martial arts and meditation and Qigong. Uh, getting my body right. So even on a physiological level, I'm getting the blood flowing. I'm getting the endorphins going. I'm not uh, stuck in or wallowing in that stuff. But I mean, I'm, you know, I'm saying this, but I've spent too much time in that wallowing, uh, self-pitying place and, and, and acted from that place too, right? You, you don't book anything for six months or a year. People aren't calling and you can't help but take that personally. And so it just, you just start caving in on yourself. The first thing you do is look at yourself and go, there's something either I don't have or I'm unable to get or whatever it is. And your head starts spinning and you, you start creating an identity of I'm a struggling actor. And there's something about that identity that starts, it wants to perpetuate itself if you don't break out of it. Like it, it yeah. wants you to struggle. It yeah. wants you to, to, to you, you would prefer to be a struggling actor. You'd prefer to struggle. 
and and actors say that I'm all the time because I'm not working right now, I'm not booking right now, then I am a struggling actor, right? An aspiring actor rather than I'm a working actor. And so we'll talk a little bit about what that means to be a working actor so that you do, you could actually take ownership because you are doing the work yeah. um, and, and not sitting in this place. And self-loathing kicks in and that's not unusual. But then you start identifying yourself and spiraling down into that dark, dark place. Which is which is the death of of humanity of art and leadership? Absolutely, yeah. And from that place, no good can happen. You're not creating space for creativity, yeah. uh, for art. That that spark isn't there, and, and actors need that spark. So then, the question you ask yourself is, how much work or what kind of work do I need to do to feel that way? Yeah. And it might be acting adjacent. You know, like it, it might be that. Whether it's therapy or I just know when I, you know, hike three times a week, my life is better, my head is better, my auditions are better. So you got to ask yourself, what do I need to feel happy and whole in these relationships? And so it's the difference between I have an audition, you know, next week, uh, Tuesday, and I'm going to wait and wait and wait for it. And I haven't worked in six months or a year Mm -hmm. on the one hand. On the other hand, it's, you know, Thursday or Wednesday or whatever it is. And uh, on Monday, I was in class. On Tuesday, I was writing with a friend of mine. Uh, Wednesday morning, I did that script reading, uh, you know, just living that lifestyle of an actor. I decided to put three things on tape. I'm shooting my own thing. I'm writing my own thing. And P.S. next week, I have that thing on Tuesday. And when someone says, are you an actor? Yeah, there is that little nod to what they're asking is, have I seen you on anything? Or that might be the next, you know, the next question. But in your mind, you need to know, we talked about this before, how to answer that question so that it, so yeah, you are an actor. Yeah. Uh, so that you show up to these auditions, these self-tapes, knowing I'm an actor because I'm doing the fucking work. Yeah. And you, and it's exciting for you. And, and, and it right. does all the, the uh, and, and the, the booking of it, <clears throat> of things doesn't have a, as much weight, but also, as we said, ultimately you, you're that kind of actor walks in a room. Right. Um, you do have license to operate because you are operating, sure. you know, fully all cylinders firing right. as an artist. And, and you, and you know, you have to figure out what that is for yourself. It, right. it, it, it is, but, but it always does come to, I think we've talked about this and we have those, you know, the five pillars yeah, or yeah, the, yeah. the, so doing something that is contemplative, whether it is meditation or some kind of inner self-reflection, self-reflection, yeah. contemplation, something that is physical for you, whatever that looks like for you. But it, but again, it's not so much pumping at the gym. Although I know some people who, no, you know, sure. really the endorphins are go and, and, and they just feel excited and full. And then some kind of, you know, writing, processing, journaling, we believe in that because things happen when you dump them out of your head and heart onto the page they just start to flow out of you. You start to process them. And it's such a powerful exercise. And then being an artist every day in some capacity, and then offering something in community service in some kind of generous outside of yourself focus where you give up that self-centered thing. Yeah. And and the other thing that we've talked about a lot is, you know, what are those things that fill you up in your life so that while we're saying, you know, th- Hyper focused on all the things you need to be an actor. What about family, and friends, and yeah. community, and things that you need to do human to human right. that are going to open and and uh, expand your heart so that you live in love and you're not coming to this work with that kind of resentment. And if you can live in that place, also that self loathing starts to melt. Sure. At least that's my experience. Mine too. And I, I mean, so much of this, I think, for actors is like when I book that big one, then X, Y, and Z, you know, whether it's family or whatever else. It happens in, in larger centers like Los Angeles or New York. Uh, maybe that's true of Vancouver, Toronto, Atlanta as well, where people go to to be in the industry. They don't think of, oh, I need to create a structure here that is a foundation of my life emotionally and otherwise. Um, and that fills me up. And then from that foundation, I pursue. They go right to pursuit. And they don't create that emotional or social and financial foundation that they need. So, look, it needs to be unimpeachable and undeniable to you that you are worthy of the success that you're looking for. And that is work that is your responsibility to do. And if you're looking for the industry to do it for you, uh, you're not going to find it. You'll think you'll find it because you'll book something and you'll go, oh, yes, I, I got that validation. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? It's, it's a lovely pat on the head and a handshake. And it's like, wow. I'm doing a good job. This is great. Honor that. But on a fundamental level, 
that wind will blow the other direction in a second. And all you'll have is the work that you are doing and the responsibility that is yours to fill your own tank, no matter what that means. So show up to every point of contact with the industry, having done the work of, of having your tank full. Yeah, yeah. And I want to say one more thing about what it means to be an artist, because what I love is seeing people find new ways to embody that. It doesn't mean they're not actors. Uh, it doesn't mean they're they're giving up their actorhood. But because you're an actor, there's a very good chance that you have that creative spirit and talent to do so many other things that you might love. And it's important, even if you're young and hungry and you want to do this more than anything in the world and you've given up so many things to be here, there are so many other things that you're capable of that are possible. And most actors, when they hit a really high success point, they do those other things. Like, this isn't enough for me. So what is what do, what are those actors doing? What is Viola Davis doing? She's starting a production, started a production company to foster other work created by women of color. What did George Clooney do, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. People create and expanding beyond I'm just an actor sort of thing. I mean, you could go the Gwynny route and create your own goop. Oh, but, the fa- but the fact is, oh, what's the, what is that for you? You know, are you a photographer? Are you a painter? Are you a I'd just be worried DP? that I'd, I'd, I'd use that cream that she, she suggests and I'd get a rash. That, I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah. Is it FDA approved? I don't know. I don't think, I think she's beyond that. But, <laughs> but it does speak to somebody who doesn't says, right. who says acting is, you know, doesn't, it doesn't fill me up. Right. So something else filled her up, you know, God bless her. God bless you her. You know, but what is that? What is that sure. for you that may not, you don't have to even call it acting adjacent. It's just the uh, expanded expression of your artistic soul. But I say voice. that because again, as you know, <clears throat> even people who show up to the studio, right, they're looking for that thing. They want that thing so badly. Yeah. So they, they, they have this hyper focus on the goal that they create in their head, which is how do I crack the audition? And it, and that focus is so myopic and so small that they miss all the other parts. Yeah. And and so then their work suffers and their careers suffer. Yeah. And then they go through that. I booked one. Everything's great. And then right down to the bottom because I haven't booked anything in two, three months or a year. And it's that uh, that process, which is so again, inefficient. Like it's, it, if there's a path to success, that's not it. Yeah. And don't think that you, like you just said, you're going to do this work once you, you know, let me just go book the thing. And then, right? I'll, right, right, and then right. I'll take, and then I'll do all the stuff right. you're talking about, but I don't have time for that now because I just got to book the thing. This yeah, yeah. is the direct path right. to booking the thing. This is the booking mindset. For sure. Yeah. And, and I just want to be clear here again, and we touch on these these points in in much more detail in our online classes, our online programs, online coaching. But each of these requires a considerable amount of work, work that will evolve uh, and ultimately must be a consistent practice. Number three, (laughs) active service. So what I mean by that is uh, you know exactly why you're doing this. You filled up the tank so you're a whole and happy human being from that place. There is a shift of active pursuit. The, it's no longer uh, that place of, or that spirit of what do I need to fill my own tank? My tank is full. Now the focus becomes the material, the reader, um, the people in your life, everything from this place of abundance that I've given myself, where and how can I actively serve? That practice uh, creates value when you walk in the room or when you offer a self tape. The spirit of that, I'm here to help. I'm here to serve. You described it, right? What can I do for you? I'm here for you. Uh, uh, it allows you to see the suffering that's there in all its forms, including, wow, I read this pilot audition and it really feels like this thing has been written by 10 different people. It doesn't actually make sense, but because I know what I want, I know why I'm doing this. I have this, uh, this tank that's full because I've done that for myself. I'm going to fix this. <laughs> and you're going to love it. It's going to be great. In fact, I'm going to enjoy making this work because I'm approaching it with that, that clarity, again, that I've given myself. Uh, and I'm going to elevate this for you. It's not a hierarchical uh, situation where now we've come over and I'm so great. It's, oh, I see need here and I'm going to help. I'm going to pitch in. And that's also a practice, but I think it has to come, uh, as you approach the business, it has to uh, uh, come from you to, to, to make that switch for yourself and go, my job here is to serve. The email comes in from the agent, uh, the breakdown, you read the thing, no matter your feelings about it, the preparation, it's not let me uh, make choices that I know they need so that they will love me. 
or try to fit the box of uh, you know the breakdown that says all sorts of weird things that don't make sense. It's I'm going to bring myself fully to this in the spirit of giving this to you, um, which is essential. And and I think that's that's a that's a big shift. Yeah. So and even sort of in terms of the trajectory or, or energetic flow, we have the why, which is very much an internal process. The what do I need? Let me serve myself, fill the tank. And then there's the shift of focus outward, which is a really important practical shift to make. And again, that's also a practice, this practice of generosity. Uh, every room you walk into, any agent meeting, how can I help? How can I serve? Yeah, it's... Um it's something that changes everything because also you walk into rooms or you do a self tape. You have to remember that everyone else has done as much as they can to get this script or this project to a certain place. And now they need you to give it voice and life and make it and, and, and take hand the baton to you. And then you now have to continue that. So you have to take that baton and then you have to move forward and, and be able to muster up all of your, your, your inner workings that have now evolved as you've been made, doing these other things and practicing filling the tank and practicing all of this self-care and all of this self-value so that you can then elevate the work, but also remind them of what this is because they have so forgotten. They just had their budget slashed and they just had, they were told that their schedule is, is being slashed and they just lost their director and they are desperate for you to come in and teach them how to come back to the work. And so when you can do that, you're actually touching them human to human and you're offering them something that they've forgotten. And and that's huge because they get sparked by that, they get moved and affected yeah. by that, then they are able to to uh, open their hearts and receive what you're offering. And it's huge because they don't forget that. That is so unusual and so significant for them, them being anybody who's on the creative team waiting for you to show up and offer something. And, and even, you know, the, the money people or the business people, like that, even if they have two hats, right? It's like, yeah, but I also want the show on the air and I want it to last seven seasons. They know that that's the value, right? Like if you can make, if I'm a showrunner and you can make me feel that way, I want you to make the audience feel that way. I know you have that power. And so, you know, this expression of service becomes an expression of your talent, an expression uh, of that work that you've done on yourself, an expression of your value, which I think is really important. So now you're radiating through, you know, this energetic radiation of I have value, and because I know I have value, I'm going to help you. I'm going to serve, uh, which is really exciting. Now there's a bit of a twinkle in your eye as you're offering your work, and it's it's outward focused, and it's I'm going to make I'm going to get what I want from this reader, and I don't really care whether this reader's on her phone or whatever, yeah. or not looking up at me or overacting. I'm going to, I'm here. I'm here to serve. This is great. You're in a better place to yes and when you have that spirit of, yeah. uh, of external focus from that spirit of uh, understanding one's own, own value, that wholeness. And, and if you engage with a reader from that place, you're actually in the midst of a storytelling uh, experience. You're in a scene, you're in a relationship, and that changes everything for everybody. And that's how you book work. Right. All of these things really, truly are how you affect an audience, a reader, um, your, your, the creative team on any show or movie, and how you collaborate and then elevate and then book work. And number four is you go back to number one. So the industry is going to be up and down and up and down. It'll love you. It'll be fleeting. It'll go away. It won't listen to you. Uh, no matter what, you always come back to, yeah, but why am I doing this? It's not something that you get and you're done. You come back to the why. You come back to the focus on filling your tank. Then you come back from there to this outward expression, this active service. Um, and, and you know, coming back to, to that why from the beginning and moving forward, then circling back again in this beautiful circle creates uh, an energy that is attractive. It, it, uh, it informs the way that you prepare. It informs the way you walk through the world, which is exciting, and, uh, and, and it starts making room for you. It's the damnedest thing. You know, I love that you said that because at the end of the day, this is bigger than booking a job. It so has to be. It has to be. You know, how do you want to be a whole, happy human being? How do you want to experience your, the world, your life? How do you 
make room for love and connection. Um, I've had a few people recently in my life um, die, and it just keeps bringing me back to what is this all about anyway? What matters? And when you come back to what really matters, what the deep value of your life is, um, all of this makes more sense. So this serves a much bigger thing. And then by serving that, you can come back to to your why and to your ability to experience your art and your career and the pursuit of this thing, your ambition, with wholeness and happiness and love. And I would say that in the interest of efficiency with all this, I think actors are best served to not crack this open in, in case of emergency. Um, that if you can daily go through the practice of, of these four elements, uh, the fourth being coming back to the beginning, I think you're much better served than only doing this when the agent drops you and you need to pull yourself up off the floor. Uh, I've done both. I, I've been in the practice of this, but also hit walls and found myself lost in the desert and then realized that, oh, I need to come back to the why. And it's just a much more elegant process and a much more peaceful process when you're doing it consistently. Yeah. No shortcuts. No. Yeah. So everybody, we are going to offer you our 10-day actors challenges. We have three of them. Uh, we normally charge for them, but we're going to offer them to you free of charge because we want you to have a bit of a framework and a context where you can put this stuff into practice. So just check the show notes for them and uh, sign up for them. And they're yours. And beyond that, which is a great thing to do, and I encourage everyone to do that, we have online coaching wherein uh, we deal with a booking mindset. We deal with it with great specificity, taking you through practical steps to make this part of your life, part of your practice, so that it uh, manifests itself anytime you want it at every point of contact with the industry. Uh, so sign up in our show notes and check those out as well. And just a reminder to be in a community of fellow thriving, searching, exploring artists, get in class, be in and among people who stimulate your creative spirit and your purpose the way it has done for us in class. And we invite you to join us here with that. And when you finish listening, put some of these things into practice right now. Meditate, journal, move your body fill up your tank, answer what your why is, get yourself really focused, get inspired on it and do it today. We know that you're feeling the stress of these challenging and uncertain times. We are too. And it's possible that you have no idea how to nourish yourself as an actor, as an artist in all of this. It's possible you don't know how to find an artistic community. And, and it's possible that you don't know where your career stands right now or, or even what you can do to take action to feel like you're moving the needle at all, professionally or artistically. And we're here to tell you that that's okay. It's okay that you're feeling all that. It's necessary, actually. Everyone we know in and around this industry is feeling all that. And we want you to know that we're here to help. Every month, we open up our online studio doors and invite you to join us for a virtual workshop where we dismantle and reconfigure your approach to your craft, the industry, auditions, booking, self-tapes, and taking care of your creative soul, now and always, and what we do in our classes to make it all happen. You'll hear our unique take on what success means as an actor and how to get it. And yes, you'll get all your industry questions answered from industry professionals. And by the way, the answers may surprise you. You'll connect in this virtual summit with us and with actors from around the globe, all experiencing the same feelings you're feeling and who have shared challenges, hopes, and questions. It's our mission to make you feel empowered and confident, even excited about what's ahead and what you can do right now. So join Steve and me online, meet our amazing teachers, find out what actions you can take in order to thrive, and let us guide you to the success you're looking for. To reserve your spot, check out the summit link in our show notes to sign up. Space is limited, but we want you to be there, so click the link. We love sharing this content with our community. We offer it 100% free, and it's our privilege to do so. 
If you're loving this podcast and are interested in offering something in return, go ahead and subscribe to The Acting Podcast. Then find us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you like to listen to your podcast and leave us an honest rating and review. Your words will help us bring this work to even more actors and artists around the world. Thank you so much for listening and for being here with us. We love how this community shows up for us and for each other online and in the studio. Come visit us online at thebgbstudio.com. Jump into a class with us. We're here to get you into the kind of shape necessary to be successful.